Welcome back to the Whiskey Couch with me, Gustav Miller, as your host. In this video, I am going to give a brief explanation of the different words, phrases and concepts used in the whiskey language. Just to make it a little bit easier to understand what people mean when they speak whiskey. I'm going to cover areas such as the production or manufacturing or no, production of whiskey, as well as different categories of whiskey and also how to read the label on a whiskey bottle. Let's start with whiskey in general. In order to call something a whiskey, you need to satisfy at least three different criteria. The first is that it must be made from grain, such as corn, wheat, barley, rye or rice. And the second is that it must be matured in wood. And thirdly, it must resemble the basic characteristics of a whiskey. Whiskey was not always called whiskey. In the ancient Gaelic language, it was called Ushkabetha, which means water of life. And if you want to pour yourself a glass of whiskey and you want to use the traditional Scottish term, then you would say, I pour myself a dram. I am enjoying a dram, the traditional Scottish term. Let's talk about the production of whiskey. What are the ingredients necessary if you want to make a whiskey? Firstly, you need a very good water source. Secondly, you need yeast. And thirdly, you need grain, such as the examples that I just gave. Yeast, water, and grain and you can make yourself a whiskey. You might have heard about that word malt. I'm drinking a malt whiskey or, or I want a malt whiskey. What does that mean? Malt is malted barley. So one of the grain types that you can use for whiskey, namely barley, when they steep that in water and they allow it to germinate for two to three days, and then stop the germinating process uh, by drying the wet barley either with hot air or hot smoke. Uh, then you end up with malted barley. That is right in the beginning of the production of whiskey. So if you hear the term malt or malted barley, then you know it's barley that started to germinate and the germinating process. And there's reasons for that. But that is a story for another day. You might have heard about that word, a mash bill. What is the mash bill? Mash bill is the mix of grains used to make a specific whiskey. This one here, it's around 80% corn and the rest is made up of um, rye and barley. Malted barley, that is a typical mash bill for Kentucky bourbon. The mash bill for a single malt will be 100% barley, of course. Let's talk about the distillation process. If you go to a distillery or several distilleries, you will notice that there are two types of stills. The one is a pot still and the other is a column still. This is what they look like. You can see there. This here is a pot still and this is a column still or a continuous still or a coffee still. This one is used to distill barley, malted barley, end product, usually single malt. And this one is used to distill other grains such as wheat, corn, rye, etc. This is a continuous process. As long as you feed it grain and beer, it will continue to distill and it's used to make large quantities of spirit, typically for blended whiskies. And this one is a batch process. So that one is typically used to make single malt whiskies. After distillation, the whisky must be matured in wood. 
matured in oak casks usually when a whiskey comes out of or a spirit can, comes out of a still it looks like this after the distillation process crystal clear like water but during the maturation in oak casks a whiskey will receive 60% of its flavor and 90% of its color from the wood within which it is mature. So maturation in oak wood casks, very, very important. Right, the next one in Scotland and Ireland, the minimum requirement is that you need to age or mature whiskey for at least three years, whereas in the USA, the minimum requirement for bourbon is two years. Angels share, what does that mean? The oak wood used to make casks or barrels is porous. In other words, the whiskey can evaporate out of the cask during its maturation process. And that loss of whiskey is called the angel's share. In Scotland, that is typically between 2 and 3% per year. And in warmer climates such as India, Taiwan and Japan, that'll be closer to 10% per year. The porous wood can, of course, also take something from the environment to the inside. And that is why in coastal regions, you get a salty sea air note in the flavor profile of the whiskey. Barrels and casks. In the USA, they talk about barrels in which they mature whiskey. And in Europe, it is called casks. Same thing, just different names. Whiskey matured in an ex-bourbon cask. You might have heard about that phrase. What does it mean? It means that whiskey was matured in casks that previously held bourbon. The same for an ex-sherry cask. It's a cask that previously held sherry. Ex-port cask previously held port. And the same for ex-Madeira, ex-Amarone wine, ex-Red wine, and even ex beer barrels. Distilleries such as Jameson and Glenfiddich recently launched bottlings that was finished in beer cask. And that is an interesting word, finished. What does that mean? It means that the whiskey was matured for a period of time in let's say an ex-bourbon cask, cask that previously held bourbon. And then for the last little bit of its maturation time, it was matured in a separate kind of cask, such as a beer cask or an ex-sherry cask. So if it spent its last little bit of its maturation lifetime in a different barrel or cask, then the term is used, it was finished in that kind of cask. This is an interesting word, charred oak barrels. Oh, I forgot about this picture. Let me just show this picture to you quickly. Here you can see how the angels share the evaporation year after year and the whiskey level just dropping and dropping and dropping. Charred oak barrels in the US, when barrels is manufactured from American white oak, what they do is they use a very serious flame and they burn the inside of the cask to char the inside of the cask. So they actually let it burn for between two and three minutes. They do that because it caramelizes the natural sugar and oil in the wood. And by doing that, they make available some extra flavors that can be imparted into the whiskey during the uh, maturation process. In Europe, they don't char the inside of the casks, they just toast it, which means that they do not allow it to actually burn. They still use a flame, but they just toast it, toast it. they just darken the inside. It's the same effect 
It's just a little bit more subtle. Mizunara. If you hear that word, Mizunara is Japanese oak. So in Japan, some of the whiskies is matured in Japanese oak casks. What is a Scotch? A Scotch whiskey can be called a Scotch whiskey if it is distilled and matured in Scotland. An Irish whiskey can be an Irish whiskey only if it is distilled and matured in Ireland. A bourbon matured and distilled and matured in Kentucky. And a Tennessee whiskey distilled and matured in Tennessee. Otherwise, you cannot call it a Tennessee whiskey. What is a single malt? The word single refers to the fact that everything happened in a single distillery. And a malt refers to the fact that that particular whiskey was produced from 100% malted barley. Otherwise, you cannot call it a single malt. When talking about single malts, you can have non-peated or peated single malts. What does that mean? Non-peated means that the barley, malted barley was dried with dried air and peated means that it was dried with peat smoke. That gives the barley a smoky flavor and aroma, which will affect the end product. And this is what peat looks like. It is compressed plant material that is dug out and then dried and then used as fuel to make fire. Peat. PPM is the abbreviation for parts per million. So they use a scientific method to determine how many parts per million parts of whiskey is actually smoke or phenol or peat. So you get um, high levels of peat smoke in a whiskey, then it is a highly smoked peated whiskey or a medium peated whiskey uh, will have lower a lower PPM level. Single grain, very different from a single malt. What does it mean? The word single refers to the fact that everything happened in one distillery. Grain refers to the fact that a combination of grains was used, were used to produce the whiskey. So we get a single malt, single grain, but also a blended malt and a blended whiskey. Now everything did not happen at one distillery. Blended malt, for instance, like this one, is a combination of several single malts married together and then bottled as a blended malt. But a blended whiskey, such as this one, contains not only single malts, but also single grains. That's the difference between a blended malt and a blended whiskey. But here's another one, single pot still whiskey. This is a type of whiskey that is produced in Ireland. This is an example. Ireland produces single malts and also blended whiskies, but also single pot still whiskies, which simply means that it was produced from malted and unmalted barley. And now we can look at the interpretation or how we read a whiskey label. Just in conclusion, the first thing that you will see on a whiskey label is, of course, the name of the whiskey. In most cases, that will also be the name of the distillery. But also the age statement. This whiskey, 12 years old. If it says 12 years old, then it means that it was matured for 12 years in casks. If you see the number 12, it means that all the components in that whiskey must be at least 12 years old. And that is the age statement. NAS is the abbreviation for no age statement. 
Look at this label, no age statement, which means that the whiskey is probably between three and eight years old. And it is actually a current trend nowadays because the spirit levels, quantities um, are running quite low because of high demand. So some of the distilleries cannot wait any longer for 12 years. They need to do some bottlings before 12 years has passed. So they check all the casks and when the quality is good enough, they do a bottling under a different name, for instance. This is something else that you will see on a bottle label, ABV or proof. ABV is an indication of the alcohol content. It says the 40% slash volume. So 40% by volume percent alcohol in the whiskey. Proof is just a different type of measurement. For 40%, the proof will typically be 80, double the ABV. So 80 proof will be 40% ABV, alcohol percentage in the whiskey. Cask strength. What does that mean? You will see on this label here, it says cask strength. Normally, usually between the cask and the bottle, the whiskey is diluted because in the cask, the whiskey ABV, alcohol by volume, will be between 43 and 65 percent. Then the whiskey is diluted with very pure water to around about 40 or 43 percent, depending for uh, which country the bottling is. But cask strength means that no dilution happened between the cask and the bottle. It is quite special. And it gives you a more luxurious whiskey at the end of the day. Single cask. This is a single cask bottle. It means that only one cask was bottled. And then normally you will get both the cask number as well as the bottle number. So these are quite special bottlings and often they become quite collectible. That is it from my side. Just a... Oh, there's another one here. Let's just, let's just talk about these. Non-chill filtered and also natural color. Non-chill filtering. Some of the bottle labels will say non-chill filtered. What does that mean? Chill filtration is a process where tiny natural particles is filtered out. Typically those particles that cause a whiskey to become cloudy if you add water or ice. But it also in the process removes some of the flavor. So the tendency nowadays is that some whiskies do not do chill filtration and it will say there on that label non-chill filtered because they want to retain maximum flavor. Natural color some whiskies like this one, for instance, the producer will add coloring. It's a caramel coloring, but it's tasteless. It does not affect the taste. Simply to keep the color consistent from one batch to another. But yet again, a modern trend not to add any coloring so as to give the end user a 100% natural experience. That is it from my side. I hope this helps you just to understand whiskey lingo a bit better. All that's left for me to do is to enjoy my drum. If you are in the UK, the US or Australia, I say cheers. If you're in Germany, I say prost. If you're in Sweden, I say skoll. If you're in South Africa, I say gesundheit. And if you are in Scotland, I say slanger.